So welcome to the Arthur Clark Mars Greenhouse up here in Devon Island. I'm Matt Bamsey from the Canadian Space Agency and University of Guelph. And I'm also working with Tom Graham from the University of Guelph. This greenhouse was a donation by spaceref.com and is owned and operated by the Mars Institute. And we're working as well with University of Florida on some research here and as well Crestec or Ontario Centers of Excellence, NASA and SETI Institute. Uh, and have been working on this project as well. So right here on my right is the fall growth tray. We're growing plants up here in the Arctic because it's a harsh environment um, and eventually we want to be sending a greenhouse to the moon or Mars because plants can provide the three main essential life support requirements of an astronaut. That's air, food, and water. Plants can absorb dirty water through their roots, transpire that and we can collect that or condense it out of the atmosphere. Plants also absorb CO2 which is what we breathe out and produce oxygen and finally plants are obviously producing food. So it, it requires about 50 meters squared of plant area to support one astronaut um, and that means closing up the air, food and water loops. So that means we don't have to bring all the air, food and water that we would need on a mission. We would have a growth system or greenhouse on the moon or Mars that could provide all those life support requirements. So here on Devon Island we're growing plants throughout the fall, these grow into, into about uh, October or November, we then shut down the growing season and we simply operate the greenhouse through the 24 hour darkness uh, in the winter. And then we pick back up in the spring with our other growth system which we will activate uh, in the spring and those crops will be ready for when we arrive um, next July. So we're only here for typically the month of July and otherwise this greenhouse operates autonomously. Uh, operating autonomously is important because we want to save crew time. Crew time is a very valuable asset for astronauts on board the ISS and obviously for future exploration missions. So if we can automate the screen up so it can perform the watering itself uh, and we can do much of the ground or ground controllers can do much of the monitoring. Here we have uh, seven cameras that can do a lot of the monitoring. We're also monitoring with uh, quite a suite of sensors. We're monitoring temperatures, we're monitoring the pH and electroconductivity of the hydroponic uh, growth system that we have here. All the nutrients, uh, so instead of growing the plants in soil, we're growing it in a growth substrate called rock wool in this case, and another new growth substrate that we have in the spring system developed by uh, uh, University of Guelph in conjunction with some folks down there. Uh, and we're simply feeding the nutrients and water through uh, this nutrient control system here and pumping it up to the plants so they can grow. Crop selection is also very important for long duration missions. A number of the space agencies have their own lists of what candidate crops or what crops would be most effective for both nutritional means and mission architecture means for future missions. So there's about 20 crops that could be sent on a long duration mission to support those astronauts on board the ISS. This mission, this greenhouse is also powered by solar uh, and wind power and we operate typically only off about 100 watts on average and that you know that falls through and in the winter time when we have no sunlight we're, we are collecting wind and in that time we're only operating off about 10 watts and again we're not growing plants at that time but uh, this greenhouse again is for developing the operation strategies of how we would eventually control the greenhouse on the moon or Mars so hopefully Arthur Clark Mars greenhouse brings in some of the lessons learned that will help us eventually send a greenhouse to the moon and Mars. So our, our greenhouse is controlled with three controllers. We have one here in the top which controls our suite of environmental sensors primarily and this is our general controller controlling the greenhouse. We have a second here which controls specifically the plant growth systems monitoring the reservoir, monitoring the temperature around the plant uh, growth area and we have a third which is our imaging set so that monitors the seven cameras which we have and the gim controls the gimbals that control the cameras we also have another controller here, here developed by Simon Fraser University that's actually currently uh, locked up and closed up for the winter just in an insulated cabinet to keep it a little bit warm over winter um, we can go talk about the power system outside now if you'd like up here on Devon Island in the summer we use solar power for uh, charging the batteries that we have in the Arthur Clark Myers Greenhouse. On average we only use 100 watts uh, of power to operate the greenhouse. So here's a couple solar panels and also we use wind turbines to generate, electric, generate power for the greenhouse as well. So we have two wind turbines and that's what helps us really get through the winter when we obviously have no sunlight during that time. 
we have two weather stations, one which is connected directly into our environmental control system, that's the far one, and we have another one here which is really a, a hobo station, so that's not connected directly into our monitoring system, but that will collect data over the course of the year, um, that if we do have any failures while we're not here, that data will still be captured by the hobo. And you can see as well we have two SDX antennas or, or satellite terminals that can communicate with MSAT, a satellite in uh, geostationary orbit. And that's what we use for our communication link with the ground with uh, both Simon Fraser and the Canadian Space Agency back home. Thanks again.